Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video. And in today's video, I wanted to go over kind of an updated uh, Fi list for you all. Um, I've been playing around with different builds with Fi and I've been really trying to you know wrap my head around like what's gonna make Fi good in the long run. Um, and just really trying out a bunch of different like oriented builds, right? This isn't necessarily an update to my volume one of how of my Fi list. This is just another variation of Fi that I've been trying out. Um, for me, really, it's really been the fact of like in the last week, it's for me, it's been other than just wanting to play the new hero and play Fi, right? And play the new ninja is like, why would I play Fi over Katsu? That's been what I've been asking myself the last like week or a little less is because what I've noticed with Fi is he goes really wide. He presents mask a lot, right? He has a lot of good combo -y swing turns. But the problem that I've been seeing with Fi, you know, instead of Katsu is he's less interactable. He really doesn't have a lot of cards right now as much as Katsu does, at least in comparison, that force interaction, right? With Katsu, like nearly every attack he has in his kit, for the most part, that's a ninja card at least warrants you to think about blocking it because he has combo available, right? Because if you don't block that, there's potential that now his turn is going to get a buff because of it, right? If you don't block that surging strike, he can go get a whelming gust wave. Shoot, if you don't block that head jab, he can go get a open the center or maybe he goes against another combo card for something else in his in his hand. So it's really difficult. Um, it basically allows him to cycle his hand and, and do better. Fi really doesn't have that, right? Fi has Phoenix form, which is a good card. Um, when it comes to like an on-hit effect, uh, it, he has um, maybe even like a Soaring Strike to give a Rupture card go again or Engulfing Flame Wave, but he doesn't quite have the interaction that, that Fi has so or that Katsu has. So with that in mind, I'm trying to keep the power that Fi can give with his go-wide strategy and be able to present a lot of um, damage over a lot of different links while also forcing a little bit more interaction. So that's basically what I was trying to do with this list. Um, trying to put in as many cards as I could that made sense that would force interaction with my opponent, right? Um, the th other thing about Fi that's a little bit different than Katsu before we get into this deck tech is Katsu has a lot of starters. A lot of his go agains are his combo starters, right? So you have three surging strikes normally in a deck, three leg taps, right? 300 wins and i'm just gonna say like the minimum right you have 300 wins um you have your kadachis which are pretty much like your starters right so you have at least nine there um some people will have head jabs in their list right so you're looking at about 12 uh go again cards and then they have other cards you know that in the list that can either have go again or get go again like with scar for a scar can have it um you even see people wearing ravenous rabbles basically Katsu has around anywhere from as little as 12 or as high as like 18 to 21 cards in his deck that have go again and, or can give go again, right? So with Fi, it's a little bit different because like with this list here, right, we have uh, that has natural go again. We have Rising Resentment. We have technically Phoenix Flame, even though it's zero on the first link. We have Ruin Renegade, Bram with Cinder Claw, Soaring Strike, um, Spreading Flames, Flame Call Awakening, and then technically engulfing flame wave, right? So that's 21 cards with go again. However, not all those cards you want played on chain link one, right? You don't want to play ideally engulfing flame wave on chain link one because you're only going to have to banish a zero cost card. You effectively want to actually play it on chain link two so you have a higher chance of banishing a card off top of your deck. Flame call awakening, you don't want to play on chain link one because you can't go get a Phoenix flame after doing it, right? Um, you know, uh, Cards like um, Phoenix Flame, obviously, you don't want to play on Chain Link 1 because there's no damage being given. Things like that, right? So effectively, in a list like this, Fi really only has 3, 6, um, 9, let's see, 12, 12 really Chain Link 1 cards you want to give. So that's how you have to think about it, right? So now, you know, if I want to present on-hit effects, like, you know, what's, what's my kind of win con and what am I trying to do? So... All that to say, like, these are some of the problems that Fi has. So now it's like, how do I make the deck more interactable without losing power? And how do I punish my opponent truly and win games with Fi consistently over the course of a bunch of different heroes? So my thought process was, I want to add, I want to keep the cost curve of the deck as low as possible. I want to be able to swing with Ember Blade every single turn, because for me, I run Kadachis in the side for, for Dromai and even for Prism, but for... 
all other heroes, I'm wanting to swing with Emberblade every single turn because I want to gain that card advantage. When you're swinging with Emberblade every turn, they're now having the most of the time block with a card from hand in order to block your weapon. That's where you get the card advantage, right? Because of Kakatsu, that's why he's so good because he Kadachi Kadachis and they're having to give up a card on that second Kadachi maybe and now you're starting to gain card advantage. Fi hasn't been doing that with a lot of the lists floating around. So you want to be able to swing with Ember Blade every single turn. So because of that, we're running 18 blues. We're running a lot of zero cost cards and we're running a lot of go again. So we can have those occasional like starter into Ember Blade into another attack into a good rupture card or good like on hit effect card. Because what we're going to do is save these on hit effect cards for the end of the chain, if that makes sense. Um, so this, this deck as a whole has two kind of win conditions or two things you're trying to do or three things really. Step one, you're trying to swing with Ember Blade every single turn. Step two, you're trying to use your chain link four and fives to really punish your opponent. Every single card you play on chain, chain link four and five should punish your opponent for either not blocking or for say trying to hold cards in hand as much as they can, right? Um, because effectively what you want to do is make them block with mask one time and then present a really crappy chain link four or five attack where they're like, crap, do I just dump my whole hand or do I take this damage or take this effect, right? Cards like take the tempo, uh, cards like rise up have been really useful cards like breaking point, which is in the sideboard for certain heroes. Um, those type of cards are the cards we're looking to play. Uh, even cards like lava burst, obviously we're looking to play towards chain link four and five. And then the third kind of win condition of this deck is a high pop-off turn with Spreading Flames and Stubby Hammers. A lot of the cards, all the cards in this deck, are three power or lower with the exception of Engulfing Flame Wave and Soaring Strike and Take the Tempo. So we only have eight cards in the deck that are three over three power. So effectively, Spreading Flames, I mean, Stubby Hammers can buff all of these attacks with the exception of, of uh, eight of them. And then it also can couple of spreading flames so you kind of get those really go wide turns right so those are three things swing with ember blade punish your opponent on chain link four and five and um be able to have a good maybe pop off stubby hammer spreading flames turn so getting into that that was a long-winded discussion and kind of talk about it we have the zero cost cards here right um the zero cost cards we're trying to make the most of so first off we got your go again starters your brand with cinder claw your ronin renegade um, and your rising resentment nine zero cost go again starters and then you have your phoenix flames obviously then we have blaze headlong amazing zero cost card its only condition is you have to play a red card before it which in phi is super freaking easy um so most of the time it's coming for zero four go again on chain link two then you have your non go again cards like lava burst and phoenix form which are your rupture cards again trying to make your opponent pay most of the time in this deck, my Phoenix form is coming for zero for five go again. It actually really is hard to get all three onto the board unless you run in flame. I just don't like in flame because it's essentially a zero for two, but it only blocks for two and you've had to play a card before it. It's just a lot of conditions I don't like about it. And then we have three red rise from the ashes. I like this because it, one, it gives us a higher chance to turn on the full Phoenix form turn because if you play this, along with a Flame Call Awakening and then Fi's ability. That's how you get the full Phoenix form turn. Um, but it also buffs a good attack. So like you play Rise from the Ashes, go get your Phoenix Flame. Let's say you have two Engrave. You play like a Ronin Renegade for six, go again. Um, you know what I mean? Or you play an Engulfing. The ultimate one is playing Engulfing Flame Wave for eight, go again on Hit Banish. Um, it's really nice. So um really good for that so that's all our zero cost cards as you can see um we have 24 zero cost cards in the deck that aren't blues um and then we have our one cost cards when it came to one cost cards and how many i should have in the deck i was trying to kind of have the same rules i have with katsu and kind of because i know how katsu feels with however many one cost cards he has and includes including his non-attack actions like or his not cards that are not attacks like razor reflex i had 15 one cost cards in the deck in this, in this iteration of Phi, I have 18 one-cost cards in the deck. However, I have a couple more blues to help supplement that. So we're running Engulfing Flame Wave. It's a two-cost. It's only two costs in the deck. This is our Surging Strike of Phi. Uh, Soaring Strike is really good. You play this on Chain Link 2, and you can banish a card um, like Lava Burst or like Breaking Point and give them go again, or even play or even banish. Like If you don't have a lot of flames, you can banish a Phoenix Form, give it go again anyway. Um, really good for that. Or you can even, if you're on Chainlink 2, you can banish like a Take the Tempo and give it go again, which is super nice um, because if 
it hits. Now it has go again, so you can play out that card that you just banished if you want to. Um, just super nice for that. Spray and Flames, obviously, for that pop-off turn if we can get it. Flame Call Awakening, enough said about that card. Play it on Chainlink 2, go get a Phoenix Flame. Uh, Rise Up, I originally liked Breaking Point more in the main board, but I've noticed that a lot of card, a lot of heroes now can manipulate their arsenal. But like Icelander already could. Um, Kano can, technically. Oldheim can. Um, Bravo can. Uh, and now if someone runs crown of providence, they also can manipulate their arsenal, which yes, you're forcing that interaction. But because of that rise up is moved into the main board for me and rise up is like the ultimate punish card. If you can get like five links off using two Phoenix flames and they've blocked you, you know, once on mask and now all of a sudden you're presenting seven dominate and they're like, well, crap, I already blocked with one or two cards in hand. Am I really going to waste another card and still take four damage anyway? Most of the time, they're not going to. So a lot of times, this is a really good card, especially those 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 uh, heroes that are trying to really like stall you out. And then we're running two Take the Tempos. Again, on-hit effects. We're trying to present on-hit effects. So we have Take the Tempo as a big on-hit effect. We can give it go again with Soaring Strike or give it go again um, in some other way. It's really nice. Um, just super good. Then we have one Tome of Firebrand. I was running two, but running... This and three Phoenix Flames and Rise from the Ashes, like, can get a little bit clunky. And I've only found myself using this maybe like once a game anyway. So I'll just run a one of. And if I can get it, I can get it. If not, it's not a big deal because it's not, it can be a game changer, but most of the time it just makes your turn like a little bit better. Obviously, if you can get this off like a Spreading Flames turn, it's super nice. Um, but overall, uh, not as crazy as you think. I have gotten this off Tank the Tempo, which was really nice. Like I had one resource floating, take the tempo hit, um, or not take the tempo. Sorry, I got this off a of mass trigger. Sorry, um, with with one uh, f floating, and was able to um, play the instant speed, and then be able to uh, draw two cards, and then arsenal and whatever. So it, it was really nice for that. There's there's other things you can do with. It. I can't remember the exact iteration, but that's that's what I've been looking at doing. Um, and then, then we have our blues again, we're running 18 blues in the deck. The reason I want to run 18 blues in the deck is because I want to swing with Ember blade every single turn because I want to try to get that card advantage. The one thing you lose when you don't play Katsu is what, then when you play with Fi is that card advantage. Some people would say just build a Kadachi build, but I like the Draconic Link stuff when it comes to banishing cards from Soaring Strike and from Rising, when it comes to playing Tome of Firebrand, right? When it comes to playing Engulfing Flame Wave, all those rely on Draconic Links, which uh, Kadachi's kind of hurt a little bit. So for me, I want to run Ember Blade in the main board. And because of that, I'm trying to run, because I'm trying to swing with it every single turn, I'm running a total of 18 blues. I'm running three or nine three block blues and then nine two block blues. My three block blues are Lava Vein Loyalty, kind of an obvious one. Uh, Soul Bead Strike uh, is a gen generic ninja blue. It's a three block blue that attacks for two and on hit go again. Perfect, honestly, for what Fi is wanting to do. Um, Sift is one I put in there. Uh, it's a 99% of the time, it's a three block zero cost blue because I need all these to be zero cost for when I side in my Kadachis. But there has been one or two times already where I've used the effect where I've drawn super unlucky. Like I've drawn a sift, a Phoenix flame, a tome of firebrand, and like one other crappy card. So I can like sift out three of those cards, two of those cards and just redraw my hand. Um, it's been really nice for that, but I've only used that like once or twice. Um, then for the two box, we have rising resentment, just really good. Um, it's a go again card and it has an add effect. If you absolutely could possibly use it somehow. Um, Rarely you're ever going to use its effect or play it for its effect, but overall it's like one of the better two block blues. Um, that's also zero cost. Then you have rise from the ashes again. We're trying to same thing where if I draw all zero cost attacks, I could play and I maybe or I draw into two blues with all zero cost. I'll use this to give a pump. Use my other blue to swing with Ember Brand uh, Ember Blade and just keep going. And then we have Brand with Cinder Claw. I'm running six Brand with Cinder Claws for when I side in Kadachis. At least I can use them for that possibly and keep those Draconic Links going. So that's it. And then the main board for equipment, the obvious setup, Mask, Fiddle Spring, Tunic, Stubby Hammers, Snapdragon Scalers. Um, snaps, I've heard a lot of people saying like, what do you run Snaps on? What do you use Snaps for? Well, for me, I'm mainly using it for Lava Burst into something else. So like I've had a Lava Burst into a Rise Up. Like, you know, you have, you know, 
a turn where you're playing Lower Burst on Chain League 4 for five resource five damage. You still have one resource floating. You snap and then you play like Rise Up for like seven dominate. Like it's super nice for that, or even five dominate. Um, I've done that, or I've done Lava Burst. And it's like take the tempo, banish, then I still have a five card hand. It's been other stuff I've done that have been really nice. Um, I think I've actually had one turn where I did Lava Burst on Chain Link Four. Um, it hit. I snapped it and then played Take the Tempo. They didn't want to block it. I got uh, because they blocked on Chain Link Two, Three, Four, and Five hit, and I got Mass Trigger and Take the Tempo Trigger. So it was super nice for that. Um, so yeah. That's what I'm running on those uh, for snaps, and then in the in the, in the sideboard, I have three Nolrune. You gotta you gotta respect the Kano and the Ice Laner matchup. I'm running AB three into both right now. Um, you just gotta you gotta respect it. Um, Kadat uh, Shuko, I'm running right now. Uh, I have um, basically for like fatigue matchups, it, it does a little bit better, obviously, giving that unpreventable damage. It's also really good in a prism because you can't prevent damage uh, with some stuff. So, um, and it helps block in our erudition. So I run it in prism. I run in oldheim. I run in the Icelander, um, or not Icelander. Run in oldheim. Run in the prism and run in a Bravo. It's who I'm running into right now. So then you have your Kadachis. I'm running these in Dromai. Obviously, is like the obvious one. I'm testing it and running it in a prism over Emberblade. Uh, still trying to figure that out right now. I'm running it in a prism. Um, and then I also run them in Icelander because it allows me to keep cards in hand, pitch a blue, swing my Kadachi twice. Like, and they they obviously want to use their arsenal, but if I still have three cards in hand, it's not as scary as it could be. Um, and I want to lead with Kadachis first to try to gain that card advantage. That's what I'm doing. Then we have three erase faces. This card is just goaded. It's amazing. It's so good in so many meta decks. It's great in the prism. All our heralds can't go again if it hits. Um, it's good in a briar because she can't fuse and she can't pitch an earth card to keep channel, Ma channel Mount heroic in the field. Uh, it's good against Lexi. She can't fuse. It's good against o Oldheim. He can't fuse or do a frosty hammer. Um, what else? It's good against Bolton. He can't, you know, you have light, any light effects. Like it's so good against everything. It's good against the mirror because they don't have Draconic links anymore. It's good against Katsu, uh, because he can't really do much. A lot of his stuff. Like it's good against everything. This is the new CNC. It's a new CNC, in my opinion, as far as like useful in every deck. Um, then we're running three thaws because Ice Laner is a thing, and we're also running it in the old high matchup, uh, being able to get those afflictions off the field. That we're not really using it for frostbites, we're gonna banish when we want to get an affliction off the field. Um, and then two breaking points these will come in for take the tempo on, on, uh, against, um, against heroes that really value their arsenal, so aggro. If we play a Briar, a Fi, or a Katsu, um, we're putting these in for Take the Tempo because I want to challenge their Arsenal as much as humanly possible. Um, and even Bolton. Bolton huge because he wants the Arsenal Illumina and just hold it until he's going to use it, and I'm going to force him to block. Um, so it's really nice for that. So, yeah, that's the deck so far. Uh, really solid. I'm really enjoying it right now. Um, definitely another way of playing Fi where you're really focusing, again, on swinging with Ember Blade every turn to gain card advantage. You're trying to do a pop-off turn with Spreading Flames and Study Hammers, and you're trying to use your fourth and fifth link. Every fourth and fifth link, you want to have some type of on-hit effect or, like, devastating damage effect. So for us, it's Rise Up, Take the Tempo, um, Breaking Point, and Lava Burst, and then Phoenix Form. Like, all of these we want to have as, as much as possible. So, yeah, pretty standard, nothing crazy. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Hopefully all this made sense. A little bit of rambling here and there, but it's I've just been really passionate about trying to figure out the best build for Fi. Um, and I think this is a good start, honestly. Uh, but there's so many cool builds going around for Fi right now. The two top eights in the New Zealand RTM are both completely different from each other. One ran belittle with a bunch of non draconic attacks. One was more standard, focusing on like spreading flames and in flame and having a big pop off turn. Like, there's definitely different ways of building Fi, and it's really fun. Um, but yeah, if you like this, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if not me, go to our Fleshbug Creator, do the same thing for them so we get more people seeing this game. Um, and yeah, hopefully y'all enjoy this content and I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much and have a great day.